Welcome to the Dreams Are Real podcast, where we aim to ignite the fire that allows you to unleash your greatest potential. I'm your host, Dan McPherson, and I'm on a mission to help you own your story on the way to building your ideal life. The first step toward achieving your dreams is to overcome the momentum of zero. Take a step and let that motion dispel the emotions of fear, worry, or self-doubt. No matter where you are in your life or career, only you can make that choice. The good news, you've got this. Why? Because dreams are real. Let's dive in. All right, welcome everyone to the Dreams Are Real podcast. I am very excited for my guest, Ian Hawkins, who is joining us from Australia. Hi, Ian. Dan, how are you? I am fantastic. And for everybody, Ian is a friend of mine for the last several months. We were introduced by a mutual friend. Shout out to Dan Zener. Appreciate that. And Ian is a coach and he he has the best title for a coach of maybe anyone that I have heard in a long time. He is a personal evolution coach and he he will tell us a little bit more about that in a bit, but he is focused upon family and life and helping people and has a passion for sports and a passion for helping people that in a way that has connected with me in in very powerful conversations that we have had. So welcome Ian. Thank you Dan. Great to be here. Appreciate it. Oh, great to have you here. You know, with everyone, as we bring them on, the first question I, I, that I'd like to ask is, what is it that you respond? How do you respond when other people ask, what do you do? Yeah, good question. So I help people to create a, a lifestyle that they're excited about. I help them to find a deeper meaning to their life. And I help them to experience all those beautiful emotions that they sometimes uh, that they perhaps experience on rare occasions, but I get them to get them to experience that every single day. Wow. That's uh, that's pretty deep. It sounds like it. So, so tell us a little more about that. How do you, what, what is your approach? How do you go about that? And, and what type of a transformation do you really see? So I go about that by the starting point is always getting clarity and, and what is that that you want? What's your vision? What's your dream? And I know you talk a lot about dreams and that's probably why we've resonated um, on so many levels because we're talking similar language but coming from very different angles. And I guess the, the probably the key difference around vision that how I present it is it's really tuning in to, to your inner guidance to find that vision. What I see is so many people out there are creating visions and dreams and goals based on what they think society is saying they should have what they think people in their life, the important people in their life think they should have, instead of really tuning into that inner guidance, that inner intuition, inner inspiration, um, your inner being, if you will, to find what it is that is, is your true path. Um, and I know you, you use the, the, word, the, the term North Star. So it's really finding that inner alignment to find that vision. Because when, when you can find that vision, and then have that to work towards and start to break it down into smaller pieces and learn to really trust that intuition. Then, as, as those who have already been on that sort of path, amazing opportunities and solutions to different challenges just appear like magic. And that's, uh, yeah, that's the, the bit I love to see unfold for people. So you're, uh, you're working the magic or helping them work their own magic, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't come with any, Yes, I have systems and processes and, and different ways of doing things, but I help people unlock what is true for them, not telling them how they need to live their life or what they need to do. Absolutely. That's, that's really good. And I, and I know in some cases you end up asking, to, asking questions that help you determine maybe some origins of where things are coming from. And I like to jump back to origins as well. So before we continue down the path of deeper into what you're doing now let's look yeah. back a couple of years and yeah. ask what was your dream when you were a kid yeah so I, i've done a lot of work in this area and so i wasn't one of those people that had a definitive you know i want to be a fireman i want to be an olympic medalist i want to be like anything in particular but what i wanted more than anything i used to be um internally i was an extrovert that that cra craved connection um, externally, I was shy, cute, who sat in the corner and didn't want to engage. So that, that contradiction. So what I saw 
was while I had that deep sensory side of me, seeing how other people were hurting and just naturally I just felt into what was going on. I just wanted people to be happier and I just wanted people to, to get more of that care and, and nurturing that I could see that they needed. So just creating those connections, right? So while I was sitting there not experiencing this, my, my thought was going external to, to help people to find that. So I, I have always looked at, at the world of trying to help people to, to see themselves in a better light. My own journey as well, right? Because that has been my own path. As I've continued to, to realize that that is my path, I've continued to go on the journey to continue to, um, yeah, to unlock more about me to be the best version of I, that I can to, to see myself in a higher light. And um, that's why I have my own coaches to, to help me with that as well. That's fantastic. You know, most people, when we start with that question, like you said, they have the, the fireman or the, or the spaceman or, or, or anything along those lines. Yours sounds like it was a lot more intellectual at a younger age. Uh, maybe, maybe rather than intellectual, more, um, more emotional. Like right. it, it, was, it was probably um, yeah, just a, a different challenge that I was having personally because of this like shy kid I was. Right. I don't know how I ended up being a shy kid. Um, you know, again, you, you don't necessarily need to go into what right. what has happened to make that happen, but it was the primary thing that I wanted and needed, and and perhaps for other people, the the you know a specific is still tied around what it is that they're needing. So maybe the the fireman is something to do with um, a need to. Um, drive a big truck and uh, have a <laughs> siren to be heard. You know, who knows, right? <laughs> right, right. No, that's uh, that's pretty fair. I need to uh, need to put out fires. Most kids, I think, yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. like to get some magic start, them. start a fire. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Possibly yeah. a bit of that as well. I, you know, there two things strike me about that. One is that most people that I speak with, the, na the natural follow-up question is, when did their dream change? And for you, it doesn't sound like it necessarily did. And the second is, do most people that you connect with have an awareness at that level or is it at that early in life or is that as unusual as it sounds? Um, okay, so there's two parts to that. When, when did the dream change? Probably what happened was, is that as my self-worth didn't increase and, and the world sort of crushed that idea I had because of the different experiences that I had and my inability to cope with that as a, as a young person, I, I just lost track of that being the case. I was still instinctively doing it in places where I felt comfortable. Mm -hmm. So in my close circle, for my friends especially. So that was a place that I, that I spent a lot of time doing that. On the sporting field, it came out naturally. But in terms of a bigger picture and anywhere outside of my circle, yeah, that, that wasn't a comfortable thing. So it actually probably got suppressed, if anything. But then I, I had a, one of those, um, you know, catalysts for change moments. And that was when I lost my dad 14 years ago, where suddenly all these unresolved challenges and, and my own stuff that I was working through came to the surface. And not immediately, but it, it is one of those moments that has you questioning how you're showing up in the world and, and what you're doing. And yeah, so that started me on the path to, to go, okay, we'll need to change some things. And it reconnected me with that, um, that dream. That, that's, a, that's a pretty powerful reconnection. I've been through the, the, the loss of my mother at an early age and it re had some reconnections for me, man. That's, that, yeah, that had yeah. to be very difficult and it sounds like quite profound. Absolutely. And yeah, difficult, of course. Um, and I think... In a way, it was it was um, it brought me closer together with different parts of my family. I guess thinking about it now, um, but it also threw up a whole lot more challenges um, for us as a family dynamic, but also for me internally because some of those questions that I'd been dodging for a long time, um, I couldn't hide from them anymore. So yeah, it was it was quite challenging as you'd imagine losing someone that you care so much about, um, but it's. Uh, but again, I like I don't I don't really know how to process this. But am I happy it happened? Absolutely not. Would I have been on this path without it happening? Well, that that I don't know. So I have to just be really appreciative for the journey I have gone on since, and knowing that now it's unlocked, it's it's reconnected me to that dream and reconnected me to to who I am, and 
yeah, sure, I've worked through different challenges around that, whether it's feelings of guilt or, you know, what, whatever else. But it's 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 where I've landed, and and you know, and that part of it I wouldn't change because I, I love what I do, and I love impacting lives. And the second part of the question you asked is what what do you see for people? Well, that's part of what I do. I help them to reconnect with what it is that's always been them, and I can often narrow it down to a phrase or even a word. This has been their journey, right? Um, and I'll give you an example. So one particular client, um, he grew up in Spain and came out here at a young age, quite a young age, so taken away from his home. And his journey now has been all about trying to create places that feel like home. In his work, in his family life, in, in all parts of his life, and it's home. Home is his journey. Home is what he is going to be able to help other people achieve, that sense of home. So a, 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 an awesome environment, a connection with people, all those things he felt when he was back home in Spain and now realizing that he can create that same atmosphere anywhere. Home is not about where he was from, but home is what he creates around him through his energy and his ability to connect with people. I think that's amazing. And I know we've had conversations about that word as well and your ability to yeah. pull that about, pull that out of people and coalesce it is, is both powerful and, and even though it would seem that it is that it is almost cloudy and meaning it's it's insubstantial, I would say it feels very tangible as you're doing it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I, we've had this conversation before. What when when ego comes into it, I could sit here and go, "Yeah, I, I'm I'm phenomenal at doing that, and <laughs> and I am good at joining the dots." I, mean, I always look at it like I just have a, a, a an ability to tune into that inner guidance. And that's something I've worked a lot on. And it's my ability to not only now tune into my inner guidance, but other people's inner guidance, which allows me to pull that out of them. I'm not, I'm not telling them anything that they don't in their heart and soul already know. And it's, and it's that ability, I guess, is the, is the key part of it. And, um, and I like to think, well, that's, where does that guidance come from? Well, we can, we can you know, argue that forever, whether you call it <laughs> God, God or the universe or, you know, your inner being, your soul, whatever it is, like you can give it any name you want. But to me, it's, it's just that, it's that inner essence of all of us that, that is there that, um, that I can connect to that, that yeah, helps people find that, what it is that, that they were meant to do. I think a, a fascinating phrase that, uh, that came up in a conversation I had maybe two or three years ago with a client, it was that a good coach becomes a mirror of deeper reflection. And I feel like that's probably a good description of what you're doing for people. Yeah. And, and knowing the conversations we've had, like that's also a gift that you have because as we've talked about, you do it in a, in a different way and we end up landing at a very, very similar place, which I love the fact that we <laughs> connected, which is why uh, Dan who connected us is very good at what he does, his ability to bring, bring people together who are, who are meant to be together. So yeah. Um, yeah, he is. He's a great connector and a great guy. As as you were reconnecting things, is that where you got started as an entrepreneur? How did? How? What is your origin story as an entrepreneur? Well, the the, the second catalyst for change moment for me was um, my sister in law and I were having a conversation, and she was talking about um, you know how uh, someone in her family wasn't able to retire because um, when the GFC hit. Um, the, the, so superannuation is the, is the um, system we have in Australia that part of your salary goes into your superannuation, which like pension, right? It, it's, it's the, it gets invested and then that, that money comes back to you in retirement in, in whichever form you choose. So you put money into that, but then when you go to retire, if the market's crashed and your super <laughs> was tied up in whatever, um, well, it wouldn't have mattered what industry then, right? around 2007, 2008, oh, right. it would have, would have been in trouble. So, and that was the case. And that person had to keep working when that wouldn't have been their choice. They, they had planned on retiring. And to me, that didn't make any sense. Like, why would we do that for all those years and then be at the mercy of the markets? So it was just another eye-opener for me that I needed to do something about that. Now, while part of my journey was around sorting out my financial future, it wasn't actually that at all. What that journey allowed me to do 
which my wife and I did, we, we made so many inroads in that area and so many improvements. But what it actually allowed me to do was connect with this world of personal development, which helped me connect back to who I was. So I did a, I did a program with a uh, mentor who's, um, yes, he was, he's, his thing is building wealth through property, but actually what most of his program was around mindset. And so from a sports perspective, I'm like, okay, I've already, I've already dabbled in some of this of, of like visualization and, and high performance states and that sort of thing. But then when you apply that um, to, to any area, like wealth was, was his vehicle, but it's like, actually, this applies to everything. So I went down the rabbit hole in that area, starting to learn so many different things. And, um, and now I can't even remember what your question was. <laughs> <laughs> it was your, you, you were answering it, I think. It was really <laughs> what, what was your origin story as an entrepreneur? What got you started? And, and I have yeah, to tell right. you, you mentioned sports three or four times. Can you give us a little insight as to what you've done and how that plays into it as well? Absolutely. And that ties in perfectly with the story of the, the entrepreneurship as well. So I was, I was a, uh, a kid who just loved to play. Um, I was, I was naturally talented without being, I wasn't, I wasn't the kid that people looked at and went, Oh, this person is going to be a, a future superstar. But I was, I was gifted enough that I stood out enough in, in the teams that I played with. I was also like naturally a leader. So while, well, in the rest of my world, I was shy and reserved. Once I got on the field, I, um, I actually had a, a really um, important mentor to come into my world. And uh, his name, uh, Frank Haffey, he, he was a goalkeeper for Scotland many years ago. Mm. And he's, he happened to move to Australia. Um, his son was playing in my team. And he, I don't know whether he saw something in me that, that, he knew, but he, he just encouraged me, you need to be talking on the field all the time. And he had a few, he was a close talker, right? So he'd have some of these conversations where he'd come <laughs> right up to me and, and I'd be uncomfortable, but he also, like he, he made me more comfortable by, by really pushing my comfort zone. So he was right always, <laughs> well, yeah, but, it, but like being so kind and nurturing and just saying, look, you know, you're, you, you need to be vocal on the field all the time. And you need to speak up. So I actually realized that that was natural for me. I'm, I'm a natural cheerleader. And I don't say that like being the person on the sideline. In everything I do, I'm encouraging and I'm, and I'm kind. And that that's, comes out of me naturally. There are different moments and different trigger points where perhaps I suppress that because of you know, different patterning. But, but the inside of me was that, that place of like, encouragement. And he also had one of those conversations with me when I think he was finishing up and it was the end of the season Maybe he wasn't going to coach the next year, but he just said, he goes, look, I just want to say something to you. He goes, you, you, you're really a, a really good footballer and soccer, right? We, football in most of the world, that's, that's soccer. He <laughs> said, he goes, he goes I, I, just want, I just want you to keep playing this game. And that's the first time, I guess, that I probably had anyone say to me at a level that I understood that how good I was. So my journey was like my lack of self-worth in every other area of my world, same with sport. I have people tell me now like how good I was, but at the time I never felt that. I always like downplayed it or whatever. And so, so part of my journey when I got to adult years was, well, could I have been, could I have played at that level if, if I'd been like, well, had more self-confidence, been given more opportunities, been exposed to all those things. So my first well, thought around starting a business was, well, I want, to help, I want to provide a pathway for, for young people from a um, maybe low socioeconomic background or from, from you know, maybe limited resources and opportunities to give them a pathway to elite sport. So when I, when I think of it that way, perhaps I did want to go into that, that place into, um, into elite sport as a youngster, but because I had so many other things going on, I, I hadn't really given it much thought or I can't remember. Maybe I did. And it's just a, a suppressed memory, but... But um, yeah, so that's where my entrepreneur journey started. I did that for a while. I somehow wanted to tie the life skills I'd learned in the early part of my personal development journey into that as well. Um, and then it just evolved into realizing that in corporate, I was coaching adults. I was getting fantastic results. Um, it took me a little while to work to join the dots, even though everyone else probably could have told me that two years earlier. So it sounds like the the dream when you started was pretty clear and it shifted and it, while while the thread of it has held true that it shifted a little bit as you've gr as you've grown through the process. 
Yeah, absolutely. What, what's interesting though is that like one of the, my great joys and, and uh, you know, really fuels my, my um, emotional and spiritual side is um, I do coaching um, of junior football and yeah, that, that gives me some of those real tingle moments that I, that I help other people to discover in their life. Those, those real moments of meaning and, and purpose and fulfillment, um, right? And fulfillment. Yeah. So, so whether we come full circle and I end up in that sport coaching space and eventually who knows, we'll see where the journey goes. That's, that's pretty exciting. So yeah. as you've, as you've gone down this path and you're, you're running a company, you're running a, yeah. you're running a business, is that any different than you thought it would be? And if so, how would it be different? Oh, very different. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think I'd done, I'd done so much work on mindset that I just thought, well, you know, I just got to keep increasing my mindset and, uh, and that'll take care of itself. Uh, there probably was still plenty of fear because, you know, like, you know, so much of what we, who we are is built on the patterns that have been presented to us by the important people in our world. So I come from a long line of people working for someone, for a job. I'm not, I wasn't born into a, an entrepreneurial family. So it took me to, to change how I saw the world. And there have been some challenges and blockages and things I've needed to overcome in that area. And in terms of probably the biggest thing, so I was doing both for a few years, like uh, business and corporate. But in the last two years since I've been doing this on my own, probably the thing that I didn't realize would have as big an impact as it has is the um, my my real um, craving to be part of a team and to be um, yeah connected that day to day connection and and like in the my previous job so I worked at Fox Sports right the sport theme continues right, right. so so in a in a place with a whole lot of other sports fans where we used to do a lot of laughing we we got we did some incredible work but then going away from that and working on your own and then you know, trying to leverage my business so I had more time for other things. Um, yeah, that's probably been the biggest challenge, but also where I've, you know, now turned the corner in that area and realizing that how important that is to me, that, that sense of connection and making that a real priority. Um, yeah, that's, that's been a big breakthrough as well. So like with most uh, things that are more difficult than you think, it also provides the best lesson. You know, it's interesting of all of the entrepreneurs that I speak with, when I ask that question, whether running a company was different than they thought, I've never, I, I don't know that I've ever had anyone say, no, it was exactly what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Which, uh, which maybe could be an education for all of us as, and for others as they, as they enter the realm to Absolutely. That, uh, that we, that we, as, as bright as we may be, as experienced as an individual entrepreneur may be, when they step in the ring, it's going to change. Yeah. It's a great metaphor for the rest of our life too, right? Nothing right. ever works out. Well, nothing. Most things, I'd say very few things work out exactly how you had them planned in your head. In fact, they often work out in um, much more uh, interesting and, and uh, maybe challenging, but also exciting ways in the end. Right. What, what do they say? No plan survives contact with the enemy. I think that's true for, uh, for any, uh, no, uh, no, no business survives contact. Is, no business plan survives contact with the client. <laughs> it yeah, uh, yeah. changes and adapts for sure. Absolutely. Um, that's where Harold comes in, right? Because uh, when he gets involved and then he can, uh, Oh yeah. That, is that, is that the enemy? <laughs> that's right. That, that inner voice is a big deal for sure. So what is, what, if you were to say, what's been your defining moment as an entrepreneur and I, I, you're really an entrepreneur and a creative. So, so take, take one, take both, but what's been a defining moment for you? Defining moment. Like, is it that change to recognizing the need for connection? It, it's very much linked to that. Yeah. I think my defining moment has been uh, until I have something that proves this otherwise has been the, the, my realization that, that the work that I've done around people's unique uh, gifts, skills, and needs actually plays out in every single part of their life. Mm -hmm. So for me, uh, probably the one that's had the biggest impact is, is when, you know, I talked, we went through that process and as you said, it's, uh, it's a bit fluffy, but it's also, there are tangible elements to it. But what, what I realized is that my ability to, to guide people through energetically. So if people are thinking, well, what does that mean? 
uh, it's probably guided meditation in a way, is, is the same as I show up in every other part of my world. It's conversation and it's feeling. So that's how I uh, meditate best. When I, when I, that's how I do it. Uh, it's how I uh, play sport the best. It's how I connect with my family the best. It's how I do everything. And it's the same for everyone else, right? So, for example, we talked about you, know, you being particularly visual and, and conversation was big for you. And that's going to be how you would probably, you do one thing, you do everything, right? And it's, about, it's not about going back and going, oh, Gary V talks about this. Don't try and improve your weaknesses, but like double down on your strengths. What I, the big realization for me is that your strengths play out in every single part of your world. So don't hide from them. The more you can embrace them and the more you can adopt them. And even at times where you think I should be going and doing this, if it doesn't align to, to who you are and your skills, you can do it, but it's the long way around. Connect with your natural gifts and who you are and things will unfold so much easier, with so, such less, less effort, and it will feel awesome while you do it. I think that's a, there's a great quote in there from you, and I suspect it'll end up in a meme somewhere. The biggest realization <laughs> is that your strengths play out in everything you do. That needs to be your Instagram post. Uh, that, yeah, there you go. That is a, that's that might, a great that might be connection. A, uh, a longer conversation, but thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, for, for, <laughs> for sure. So the, the biggest lesson that you've learned along the way really wrapped right into that. So that's good. Here's a, here's a different take on it. What do you wish that you'd known when you started? Uh, entrepreneurial? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do I wish that I'd known? Probably that the most important work that I needed to do was on myself. So I was so keen to know what it was I was supposed to be doing and having a website and having credibility and, and all those things that you think you need to get started. <laughs> but the real work is, was I needed to work on me and work out who I was because until I got a clearer picture of that, then the, the, the same challenges were going to keep showing up in business. So I don't know if that's everyone's journey, but, but definitely for me and, and the people that I help is that they've, they've gone away from who they are. And again, it's those things playing out in the same, the same sort of cycles. But yeah, it's, doing more work on me would have, would have definitely helped before I got into the, um, trying to build a business. Yeah, I, 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 I resonate with that. My first thought when I was going to start a business, I, I knew a lot of things, but I, it was, who am I going to help? Well, I'll help everyone. Oh, I need a website. Like all of these things, right? That if they're yeah. more defined, make it so much easier to get started. And now I'm fortunate to be able to help others define those as they enter, yeah. but their yeah. lessons hard learned and hard won. Yeah. And I probably heard the same messages. Doesn't necessarily mean that I heard them. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I, I, yeah. I seem to remember letting those bounce off and I, I knew best. Of course I did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so what, if you were to think of a character, characteristics of an entrepreneur, what do you think is the most important characteristic for an entrepreneur to have? Oh, they've got to be courageous and they've got to be determined and, and probably a little bit thick skinned too. Yeah, those are, um, those are pretty tough to get, right? Well, sometimes you get them the hard way by diving at the deep end and seeing how you go. So I guess at the same time as, as we described, you know, the things that we didn't do, by going on that path, we learned the hard way all the things that we needed to do. And despite the fact that I was doing a whole lot of programs which were business building, what I got out of those programs, of course, was the work on me. So, you know, maybe if I look at it now, it's actually – going back and doing those programs with a different viewpoint. Yeah. And again, maybe I wouldn't have got the same, the same. Um, so it's actually, it's just perfect how it played out, I guess is what I'm saying. But right. if I look at one, one particular, if I highlight one particular program that I did was a two week business building program in Bali, where we were, we were going to put together all these really key elements. Well, the actual program and the people doing the program kind of took it on a different path, which is often the case. And so the facilitators just went with that. And with a lot of the work we were all doing was around self. And so we did some incredible healing. We did some incredible connections of, of who we were and, you know, the things that we needed to work on. And, and so that was far more powerful. And, and the things I let go of on that, on that um, well, I was going to say trip, but also on that, um, that program, that they, I couldn't have moved on 
with any part of my life unless I'd gone through that. So yeah, you tend to get what you need if, and if it's not what you think you need. Yeah. That's, that's really good. And, and when you speak of courage, sometimes it's just taking a step forward. When you think of thin skin, sometimes it's getting th- uh, thick skin, rather. Sometimes it's getting thin skin roughed up to become thick skin, right? Building that yeah. callus. So, calluses through pain, always the most fun way to get them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Sarcastically fun, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, you know, we, we have a little sarcasm, a little fun, a little laughter. Sometimes yeah. there are days as an entrepreneur that you choose to either laugh or cry and either way you move forward exactly uh the the crying days are just as important right because it's often you've let go of something that you didn't need to be holding on to very true are there any particular resources that you have found have made it easier to chase your dreams to 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 move forward as an entrepreneur yeah and i've got props for this one so funnily enough right i went to this program six years ago um and and I'll tell you how I knew that because after the event yesterday that I went to, they sent me a text message saying, thanks for coming. You know, here's some information. And I noticed there were three text messages before that. And those text messages were from the same business. <laughs> okay. And it showed me the original date that I connected with them, 6th of July, 2013. So yeah, just over six years ago. And they, I don't think they operate, no, they don't operate in the US, but they, I think they're pretty widely known. But the, the key person of influence, right? And I just happened to have this book here on my desk. And... Um, and they simplify how you, what was it, five-step method to becoming, to become the most highly valued and highly paid people in your industry. Now, when I first did this six years ago, it obviously didn't help me become the highest paid person in my industry. But what they do really simply is help you to articulate what your journey has been, who that, that you are, but not from a point of you have to get that right, 100% right now, but from a perspective of just start with what it is that you do know and then just get started. Right. Start talking about that. And <laughs> probably that's such a, a, key, a key element for uh, moving forward because we think, we, we think as humans we have to have it all worked out now. And we look at you know, uh, social media, Facebook, and we go, everyone else seems to have their stuff together. But uh, why don't I? But the reality is that no one has it. <laughs> no one has it. Right. We, we we present they present what you know what they want the world to see of what's going on. We're all a and, hot um, <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you don't want to look behind the curtain. <laughs> um, so, and actually thinking about it, probably the key the key message that came out of that program also aligns to so many other messages I heard from mentors and people I was listening to, and I still have it up on my wall. Um, in my bedroom, you're already sitting on a mountain of value. Everything you earn in the future will become from the value that you deliver. And so what that meant, they use the analogy in the book of when you stand on a mountain peak and you look out at all the other peaks, it doesn't matter if you're standing on the toppest, the toppest. <laughs> oh, I'm doing a detox at the moment and my brain is, yeah. Uh, if you're, if it doesn't matter if you're standing on the highest peak, when you look out, with perspective, it looks like the other peaks are higher. And when we stand on our value and we look at, it happens all the time, it happened to me, I look at what other people are selling and I go, oh God, that'd be so easy to sell. And then, <laughs> right. people, and then people look at me and go, oh, you know, I don't, yeah, wow, what a great space. You must have had people banging down the door. <laughs> but, it's, but it's like you look out and you think everyone else has got so much more going on than you, whereas really you're sitting on your own mountain of value and it's your journey that you've been on it's what you've learned. It's what you've overcome. And people might sit there and go, oh, well, you know, I haven't really overcome anywhere. I'm here, but I want to be there. To get to where you are now, to be still walking, yeah, still living on this earth, you've continued to overcome obstacles. It's just starting to recognize how strong you are, how much power you have within you, and how you have kept going through so much adversity, so much garbage that has come up, and you're still going. Like that's that part of it. And at some point when people realize the value in that and that when they grow, not a massive amount, grow this much, that someone who was at the level that they were when that once they'd grown that much will be listening to them going, oh, wow, I want to listen to this person because they've been on my journey and they're going to be able to guide me to get that little bit higher. And then, of course, once you get a little bit higher, well, then the possibilities are endless. Then, then yes, then you continue 
to see those possibilities. It's so important. And for I, I love your, your message and share it greatly that each person has such incredible value and connecting Absolutely. with that value transforms the world. That's what creates generational change. And that's it's a big part of my North Star and I know yours, yours as well. As we, and I think that's a great resource. We'll, we'll link to that book in the show notes as well and yeah. uh, we'll give, give others an opportunity I, to see I, it. I, I will say is that what that did was tie in what I already knew around value and I'd learned a lot about value and it's still what I do a lot of work on now and helping people with is helping them see their value and it ties into that idea of what your natural strengths are. So what it did was it actually, it was probably just at a great time in terms mm. of, you know, I needed some structure to what I did that, that provided that perfectly. That's great. There've been so many books or podcasts or resources that have hit me at a particular time that if I'd listened to them three years earlier or two years later, yeah. might've just bounced off. But when they hit you in the moment, whatever that yeah. resource is for you, it's very powerful. So that, that's good. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. How, how do you feel when others such as me in this case, because I believe it to be true, cite you as an example that dreams are real. Um, when, when I, so this is probably still a challenge for me. When, when, I, when I speak to you and you are so um, open in your praise and, and how highly you regard me, I do feel a little bit still uncomfortable because I look <laughs> at you as, as that, in that same way, how, how amazing in your journey. Um, but, but I also know that like in the past, I would have just dismissed it. And, you know, so many people, they have a lot of trouble receiving a, a compliment. Well, that was very definitely me. It was part of my journey forward was when people used to say to me, you know, oh, well done. I'm just going, thank you. And, and owning it instead of going, ah, oh, no, it was nothing, which I often did. So while there are still times where I am triggered, I quickly snap out of it and go, no, that's, like I, I do know, I do know how much value I have. I do know also that I have so much more value to give, and I do know as I continue to work on me that that value will come out. So I don't get caught in this. Well, you know, well that person's there and this person's there. I go, well, I've come this far. Like I'm sitting here, but look where I was before. Like really battling away, and you just got to keep moving forward. So, so I. I really am comfortable owning that now and, and my, my ability to, to help people to, to move forward. Yeah. I, but it's I, taken I, a long time I, to get there. It's, it's, it's been a con continued journey of my, of my own path of what I help people on now. I, I just continue to keep moving on that path because I, that's just, it will always be my journey to, to yes, again, what, what I said at the start, to see myself in a, in a greater light. I think it's a I think it's a pretty powerful journey for many, and it's a it's a great mindset that you're holding that it isn't about comparing to others, but it's about comparing to where you were yesterday and last year, and seeing yeah. that progress. It's and understanding that 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 dream becoming real isn't about other people's dreams becoming real. It's about your dream becoming real and you moving ever closer to it. Absolutely, uh, Jim Rohn used to talk about it. I used to listen to him a lot, actually. Um, I was looking for something else to sink my teeth into and, and I saw his really short video when he said, um, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. At the mm. same time, he was, he was coming into my life. Right. I actually listened to him over and over and over again. And he talked about, you've got to keep track of, you've got to keep personal inventory. You've got to so keep track so of how far you... <laughs> yeah, there you go. And uh, you've got to keep track of, of everything that you've done so that you can look back and go, look how far I've come. Right. That, that mm. celebration, or at least that recognition, is more important than I gave it value, than I gave it uh, credence to early in my life. And I appreciate your perspective on it. It took me a lot of years to get to a spot where I was willing to look back and recognize the distance that I had traveled rather than only looking forward and seeing how far I still had to go. Yeah, yeah. Good point. So, so as, you, as you do look forward, what does your dream look like going forward or now for either, either for your business or for yourself? What, what does that dream look like going forward? Yeah. So my, my, in, in the short term, I have this real desire to, to be 
um, linking what I do in my business and and my passion for sport. So I, I, I want to. I, I, from a very early day of my own personal development, I looked at the people in sport, particularly at the professional level, who who could be. Well, there's a, a, a small percentage who are such shining lights as role models that looking at they going, they so many more of them could be that shining light with some of the work that I was doing at the time. Well, now I know that the work I've done since I had that thought the last six, seven years, like I know I can make a difference to so many lives, but also sport is such a tremendous vehicle for change. And so my passion and my, and where I'm driven to, to go and how that unfolds, I don't know, but I'm letting that unfold as it will, is to then be able to impact so many people in, the, in, the, in sport at a professional level who can then spread a message of what is possible when not only are they talented at what they do, but they're here to, to spread a bigger message about how to live. And I look at some like Andre Agassi, for example. If you've, if you've read his book, you'll know that the journey he went on. And from the outside looking in, we saw the big hair, the bright clothing and, and maybe a bit of attitude or maybe a lot of attitude and, people, and perhaps we looked at him and, and we thought we knew him and we said all these things about him, like about what we thought this person was. When you come back and you hear his journey about what he experienced and how traumatic that was, it gives you a whole different perspective. Now, he had that moment where he was looking at, you know, I think he was late 20s, early 30s when he's like at the crossroads, do I call, do I... So I pack it all in here and he talked about this moment looking out the window and I think he saw a a boy delivering papers or something and suddenly thought there's so many different ways that you can, that you can live and there's so many different ways to earn a living. I have this incredible gift to make a living through tennis, but what impact could I have in the world by going out there and being the best possible tennis player that I can be? And of course, you know, we know what he's set up now in terms of his foundations and particularly around education. He, he decided, well, I, I don't love tennis, mm. but I'm going to go give it the best that I can so I can make an impact. And what ended up happening was that he, he did start to develop more of a, more, I don't know if he, if he, I can't remember whether he said he actually loved the game in the end or not, but whether he, he, he had more of a, an affection for it because of, it was a vehicle for change. So that's the space I want to play in. Um, in terms of my own, my own what, personal um, progression, it's just continuing to grow, continuing to be the best role model for, for my children, for my family, for my community, and because I want to leave a legacy. And, and I, I clearly remember at, at my, um, my father's funeral hearing the, the amazing words that people said about who he was and, and what he did and sitting there thinking, if, if I died today, I don't know what people would be able to say in terms of what, what I'd brought to the table. And I now sure, I'm sure other people would look at that differently, and of course they would because we we tend to be our own harshest critic. But I wanted to change what that story was. I wanted to change, and for anyone who's done that um, self obituary process where you need to write, you know, what what you stood for, um, what how you would like to be seen and where you are now, there's there's always a gap. So for me, I want to continue to build that legacy that that survives way after I'm gone because of the difference that I was able to make in the world. I think that's a fantastic dream. And with that, let, uh, why don't we shift into our Leaders Must Dream Fortune at Five. We'll get closer to wrapping things up with a little bit of fun, and then we'll give you a chance to share how people can connect with you. But first, let, just a few questions of fun. What yeah. is the most exciting or adventurous thing that you've ever done? Most exciting. Um, it's probably any of the travel that I've done. So, so whether it was going to, to a foreign country with my children, which brings a level of anxiety on itself, particularly when they're young and we're going into maybe third world sort of areas, um, to, to the travel I did on my own where, you know, uh, I picture hopping off a, a boat in the Greek islands in the middle of the night um, where there's, you know, people offering accommodation, wandering through these really small laneways, uh, you know, with no, with barely any light, just looking at the people with you going, is this it? Is this the <laughs> night that we die? <laughs> or in Budapest where we jumped in this black van because they said they had a combination and, and drove somewhere. And, and again, the same conversation and just everyone having that nervous laugh in the back of the car going, we could be going anywhere here. But the, the, what's that, the movie with Tom Cruise when they jump in the back of a cab? Uh, 
but had that sort of vision, right? Where, where you suddenly the, the cab closes off and you take it somewhere. And, yeah. So, but, but I mean, you know, while, while there were those um, anxious moments, but, you know, being able to get out of your comfort zone and, and travel to these incredible places in the world just opens your, your mind up to so many, yeah, just a completely different way of looking at things. So from an excitement and, and um, adventure side of things, that's, that's one of them. To me, it's probably being, being a parent is, is, the, is the biggest adventure because <laughs> you, you, can, you can know all that you know, read all that you read, be told a million different bits of advice, but nothing prepares you for having to take a small child home and you kind of get home and go, why are they leaving this thing with us? Because we don't know what we're doing. I, I remember that terror. And that is yeah. certainly a great adventure. So yeah. mo moving to our next question, what's something that you wish that you were good at, but you aren't yet? Golf. <laughs> <laughs> Chasing that little um, ball around. Yeah, yeah. There's something about it. I don't know if it's my... Um, my natural uh, kinesthetic uh, tendencies that, you know, touch and doing, but there's something that just feels good when you get a golf ball right in the middle and you watch it fly straight. And um, I, I, it's one of those sports where it's always been on the periphery of what I've, I've played so many other different sports, but that's been one that I've played sort of, you know, haphazardly and, and inconsistently. And now I'm playing once a month, although it's been a couple of months now, so we're getting back on that in, 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 <laughs> shortly. But I'd love to be able to dedicate more time and energy to that to see how good I could be because I know it, it's one of those games, again, a great metaphor for life. It brings so much frustration at different times, but it can also bring so much joy. It's also, it satisfies my need for connection because you're playing in a group of people. It's in nature. There's so many good things about it. Um, but yeah, it's very technical also and, and technical not being my strong, <laughs> my strong suit. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, um, Wanting some improvement there. Well, and you chase the feeling of that perfect hit. There's something about yeah. that in life too, I think. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> what What is the best meal or food experience that you've ever had? The first one that comes to mind is an interesting one. The first thing when you said food was curry because I just love curries. But there's a particular meal that my wife and I had. We went to a, a restaurant that used to be here in Sydney. Um, they may still exist in, a, in one of the regional towns here in Australia uh, where they have um, different musical artists come and quite high level musical artists come and play. But it's also where you sit down in a, in a dinner setting and then they, they, the, the, the band or the individuals playing on stage. So we went, one of my favorite artists was playing and I got in early, we were sitting front row. So, you know, table for two right in front of, he's like sitting right in front of us. It was like, it was magic. But you don't sort of always expect the food experience in that place to be necessarily great because it's about the show, mm -hmm. but we just got the most incredible food and the the um, the entree. And I had never been a massive seafood eater, but it was um, it was calamari and sometimes calamari. Excuse my puppy, just having a bad dream there. I hope you didn't hear that. He's he's <laughs> yelping over there. Um, yeah, this extraordinary calamari that just melted. This uh, passion fruit dressing with it. Um, I can't even remember what the main was, but I just know that that, <laughs> that continued. But obviously those two things stuck with me, but, but especially because it just wasn't what I was expecting going there to see the music rather than necessarily the food. So an amazing environment, great food, and a surprisingly good experience. That's awesome. Yeah. You mentioned that you, that you love to travel. Some of your biggest adventures are there. Where is a dream travel destination for you? Where, where if, you, if you've got to pick a place, man, this is one I really want to go. Where is that at? Yeah. It came straight to my mind, and that's the Incas, uh, South America. Um, it's, I don't know why it's calling me, but maybe it's because it's a, it's, a, it's a massive energy center. Uh, there's some mystique about it. I was always one of those people who was really intrigued by the shows like Great Mysteries of the World and and um, yeah, and, and I've seen other people's experience. So where in South America would that be? The Incas, so the you know the ancient civilization. Right. Uh, 
Well, geography is also not my strong suit. Yeah, so South uh, America, got it. <laughs> South America. Uh, it's chilly, don't isn't worry. it? I don't know. Peru. All the Indian <laughs> runs in South America. Got it. Yeah. Nailed it. Yeah, you, why did you have to answer that? Now I'm just like, I don't know where that's, it is. I just know it's right. over there somewhere. <laughs> we're, we're, we're good, oh, right? Picture specifically, right? Oh, there you Sorry, go. I thought you were looking for a specific. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, that's that's fine. I was just trying to paint a picture <laughs> in my own dream destination. See, I, I asked these questions about yeah. food and adventure and travel, partially selfishly because I'm looking for things to eat and good places to go and things to do, right? Yeah, so, yeah, nice. But the more I pin it down, and who knows, maybe we'll end up there together. That would be a lot. Yeah, of maybe. I think that'd be a great retreat. And thinking about it now, the fact that I don't know those details, it's probably time for me to go back to my dream vision and find out those details. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's the like anything else, right? It it happens when we define it. Correct. Yeah. Oh, that's that's really cool. What do yeah. you? Th this is this is a different twist on these adventure questions, but one that makes people, I, I think, think a little bit more broadly. What yep. do you hope or believe will be the most exciting invention of the next thirty years? To me, to me, it will be around connection. It will be how do we find human connection in amongst all these technologies that are taking us further away from physical contact. And it will be that, to me, which will, um, and I think I've already even given myself the answer, that the technology will not necessarily be a technology that's created, but it will be a technology, our own personal technology. So... When I, when I look at it like this, so if I listen to someone like Jason Silver, he talks about a technology is a hallucinogen because it enables you to and improve a certain situation, right? To, to connect within. And maybe this is going to be a challenge for people. But if you, if you, I've had this conversation with myself and looked up how you define, define technology. And um, it's, it's a, uh, what is it? It's, it's something like an item or something that, that improves how something works. Mm -hmm. So our ability to improve how we work, our ability to connect within so that we can connect outwardly, to me, that's going to be the technology that will really transform humanity. So what I'm hearing is personal evolution. Correct. <laughs> that, that says that you are going to have many, many clients for a long time to come and you will be, you will be well set. And that, that leads us to your thought, your message. Was there a particular thought or message that you would like to leave with our audience? Yeah, okay. Like going back to what I said before, really connecting with your strengths, find out what they are. And now when I say strengths, I don't mean, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good at, uh, at organizing people or I'm pretty good. Well, that plays into it. Think of that at a deeper level. Like are you the sort of person who is nurturing? Do you, do you really... Um, do you, are you quite sensory? Do you, you really tune into people's emotions? If that's part of who you are, then, then go deeper on that. If you're more visual, you're more the sort of person who can come up with lots of ideas, then do more of that. If you're an extrovert and love conversation, whatever you're doing for work, make conversation a big part of it. And if you're a detail focus and, and you need to, to get into the details and systems and processes, find a way to make that part of not just your work, but your every single day. Because often we go, oh, we don't want to take work home or we don't want to be you know, doing what I do at work at home. But it's the essence of what you bring to that part of work that makes you so good at your job or an element of your job that you can associate and you can use in every other part of your life. So find what that is about you and then at a deeper level, be able to connect with your inner guidance so that you can unlock that at an even deeper level, more personal evolution. Then, then that is the path to finding not what anyone else thinks that your journey should be, but what yours is. Nice. Figure out that strength and leverage it. Like you said earlier, evolve personally and go deeper. Very nice. Absolutely. Very nice. So how can our audience find you all across the world? So we had a conversation before we were recording about, oh man, no, actually it wasn't we were recording. The need for a website, not all that sort of stuff. So right. my website recently lapsed. I, I didn't renew because I changed a fair few things since then. So I don't have a website at the moment, except that for when I have my events that, that I have, and I've got one coming up, which won't be much help to your audience in, in the US, but for, for those listening in Australia and particularly New South Wales, um, Ian Hawkins coaching 
facebook.com forward slash activate my next event coming up soon in terms of just the day to day you can find me on facebook um it's ian hawkins coaching and i'm pretty sure instagram is the same except i'm a, <laughs> I, a self-confessed amateur in that area so facebook really is the place that you'll find me and and where I have my conversations. We're on it and we'll include all those in the show notes. Ian, thank you so much for being with me. You are a fantastic guy. I'm excited to have had you here and shared this conversation. I look forward to more and I'm sure our audience, as they connect with you, will be excited to find out more as well. You're welcome, Dan, and thank you very much for having me. I very much appreciate it. Thank you, man. Have a fantastic day. Thank you for joining us on the Dreams Are Real podcast. If anything we've said has inspired you to dream bigger, live more boldly, or move closer to your ideal life, please reach out and let us know. And also, be sure to share this episode with a friend. We would be honored if you would like, subscribe, or leave a review for our show on your favorite podcasting platform. And for more discussion of this episode and all things related to the Dreams Are Real podcast, and to receive your free download of Dan's Defining Your North Star training, please join our Dreams Are Real community on Facebook. Until next time, be amazing and keep crushing it.